You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh all week long. Those balls have gotten you in trouble, though. Oh, you yeah. They picked us because we're horny. Yeah. Right. And that's your chronic state. That's what you've always said. <laughs> My life has changed so much that it's almost like a completely different life. From the latest news on The Real Housewives. I'm so happy to be here and engage with you. Deep dives into celebrity legal scandals and unfiltered convos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. Welcome on in, guys. What's going on? Happy Wednesday. Hopefully you are having a great November thus far, now that we are officially in November. And I guess has fall? Fault's technically started, right? We've been in fall for a minute. Well, Regardless, I hope you are having a great week so far. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day or whatever day you're listening to this. So this week we got some really big news or well, I mean, big depending on who, I guess big depending on who's reading the news. Um, But so Dana Jenkins, there's a new report in Raider Online about Garcelle and Jax and the bot attack on Jax and, and Diana's investigation into who sent the bot attack on Jax. So I'm going to be breaking all of that down. We'll be doing a bit of a deep dive on the podcast today and we'll get into all of it. Okay. We'll get into the investigation, Diana's investigation, Garcelle's investigation, all of the key players in it, um, who possible culprits may be. We'll dive into all of it. And then hopefully at the end, you guys can give me some of your theories in terms of what you think is really going on with this bot situation, because it is wild. Okay. So I guess the biggest question on everyone's mind after this new report in Raider Online is, did Diana Jenkins find the person behind the bot attack on Garcelle's son? So Radar Online is reporting, isn't it? It's always fucking Radar Online, right? It's always Radar. That's where all these women go for all their, to leak all their information. Not to say that anybody's leaked this, but Radar Online is reporting that Diana Jenkins is another step closer to finding out who sent the bots after Garcelle's son, Jax. So according to the report, Meta was subpoenaed to turn over data on Instagram accounts that were attacking Jax or linked to the attack and the negative comments that were coming at Jax. Meta, as we know, is the parent company of Facebook and Instagram. That is who owns Facebook. That is who owns Instagram. So they were ordered by a court. A judge signed off and greenlit a subpoena for Diana Jenkins and her attorneys to move forward with discovery and subpoena Meta for data on these accounts, right? And so there's one account that's been singled out that's referenced in this Radar Online article, and this account is called at Queens of the T, and it's all one word, Queens of the T with an underscore at the end. So the account has since been deleted or possibly suspended. I'm assuming maybe they were suspended for harassment, Um it's possibility that somebody reported them or that they took their account down altogether. But anyway, the data reveals that the owner of the account is a person that is living in Northern California. It looks like Diana's attorneys want to hone in on this account since they were one of the only ones or they were the ones that sent a message to Jax. And it was the one that was shown at the reunion, specifically the neck comment, as Garcelle referred to it, which, you know, she claims was the last straw that motivated Jax to speak out about all of this. It's a really ugly comment um, about how he's lucky that his father is white and, you know, kneeling on. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, so kneeling on the neck is was the comment. Um, really dark really awful comment made towards Jax, who's a 14-year-old boy. It's just awful, right? So now we've been able to link the person that owns that account. We know that they live in Northern California. Um, A lot of other IP addresses were obtained in the subpoena as well, but they appear to be linked to accounts that are overseas, which further perpetuates the theory that this was like a targeted bot attack. So it's unclear if this Queens of the T is connected to the bots or just like a rogue demented fan that wanted to jump in on the fight. But 
we do have, or Diana, according to this report, her attorneys were able to locate this person. I believe they have their address, their IP address, a phone number. So there's information on this person. I don't know how the investigation is going to move forward or what they're going to do with this individual. I would assume they're going to try to get this individual to appear in court to answer some questions about their involvement in all of this. Were they just being a troll? Are they connected to somebody else? Were they hired? Um, or is this a real person at all? I mean, it could just be a person that it was linked to this specific account. I guess all of that will be further discovered within the discovery process. But regardless, it seems like this is a step in the right direction, or at least it makes it clear that the cast members that were accused of hiring the bots, maybe it, it, this proves that this wasn't them. Again, we have to find out like who hired this person or if this is the person that sent the bots after them. I would assume like normally if you have a bot company, um, which sorry, I, I forget that some people are unclear with the term bots. So bot basically refers to like robot fake, you know, account on Instagram. So accounts that aren't actually run by anybody, but that are just a fake account with the purpose of spamming or trolling. So in this case, it would be trolling because they're coming after Garcelle's son, right? So series of fake accounts attacking people or just spamming people. I know a lot of times you'll get messages in DMs, or at least I will get messages in DMs about like, do you want to grow your Instagram following? Do you want to get verified on Instagram? Do you want to land in, you know, big noteworthy press publications? You know, sign up for our services. And so it's strategically trying to Jen Shaw you, basically. But let's dive into the attack specifically, because there's a lot. Let's get into the timeline, the possible culprits, the messages themselves, Diana's investigation, all of it. So from the top, make it drop. Let's start at the beginning. So Jack's posted a series of Instagram comments on his Instagram story demanding that people stop leaving nasty comments on a 14-year-old's posts, right? I think it's gross. I think it's awful. He was like, I'm just a 14-year-old kid. This needs to stop. And so he posted a series of the messages that he was receiving. So I personally just think that like at 14, there should probably be some parental controls on social media. Um, maybe your account shouldn't be made public, especially when you are you have a parent that is a public figure. I mean, I don't want to judge Garcelle's decision um, to allow him to have a public account. I just think 14 years old is really young. So in just, you know, parental advisories, I would feel like would be necessary in a case like this. Not judging Garcelle. I just thought it was interesting. That was one of my initial reactions is that I thought it was interesting that he had a public account and that people were just coming and commenting on things. But then again, like at 14 years old, like, you know, when your mom's an actress and she's on a reality show, it, I'm sure, you know, you get Instagram followers and it feels kind of cool. I don't know. I'm not judging either of them. I'm just saying I thought it was interest, an interesting choice to have a public account at that age, considering, you know, Garcelle is on a reality show that has some demented fans. I think it's fair to say that some of these fans get really intense and they get really crazy. We know that the other women have faced death threats. Their children have faced death threats. I believe this happened very recently with Portia. I know it happened with Dorit and her kids a while back. So regardless, Jack should have never been the target. I'm not trying to excuse any of that. The whole thing is wrong and unacceptable and just like awful that this teenager had to face this type of visceral heat from trolls, bots, whatever. Um, but so Jack's post on his Instagram story when he saw the comment about the, the knee on the neck and the dad and what, don't come for Diana or we'll come for you. It was threatening. It was awful. Garcelle spoke out. She was like, stop coming for our kids. This is just a television show. Um, he's 14. This is not okay. Bravo then issued a statement. They gave the other women um, a statement to post on their Instagram accounts. Then Diana launches an investigation, which was was greenlit back in September. And a judge allowed, allowed her to move forward with Discovery, where she subpoenaed Meta, again, who owns Facebook and Instagram, asked them to turn over data. So the awful neck comments uh, 
as I mentioned, were found linked to someone in Northern California. So we'll see where that takes us exactly. It's all still super preliminary. It's all still really early into all of this. We don't really know what this means or how this person is necessarily involved, but let's get into the rest of this. So let's look at some of the other comments that were posted on Jax's Instagram. So when you look through them, my initial reaction was that these were troll comments, not necessarily racist comments um, and not necessarily bot comments as in bots or uh, comments from bot accounts. Stay with me because I will walk you through all of my theories. But my initial reaction reading these comments was like, oh, this just seems like a bunch of Karens that have nothing better to do with their time but go and troll some 14 year old kid because they're sad in their own lives and probably aren't getting laid by their husbands. Like, I'm sorry, Barbara, why don't you get a damn vibrator and not come after this 14 year old child? Okay, they sounded like trolls, right? They're definitely all the comments are related to the show or to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So we see mentions of Erica. We see mentions of Diana. We see mentions of Crystal. We see mentions of Lisa. Some of them are calling out Oliver for his drug use, mainly comparing it to Erica and the abuse of her abusive substances this season, which Garcelle brought up and seemed to insinuate that Erica may have a drinking problem, especially since she was abusing alcohol with her medication. The main theme of these comments, of these specific comments at least, that Jax posted, seemed to be about Garcelle calling out Erica's drinking on the show, which immediately popped up to me as like a red flag. Why are there so many comments defending Erica? Why are they all talking about Erica? And that seems super, super fishy and super suspicious, right? Well, then if you check the date of the Instagram post, of the comments, and you can see that these messages came right after the Disco Inferno episode aired on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills this season, which showed the beef between Erica and Garcelle and the spat that they had at the Rena Beauty Disco Party, which aired on August 17th. So given that context, these messages make sense if they're about the show and about what had aired on the show, which was Garcelle's beef with Erica over her drinking. So that seemed like, oh, okay, well, that make not that, that that makes it right, but at least that's given the context of why these comments were about Erica specifically because Erica was just in a beef with Jax's mom, Garcelle, on this reality show. So it is interesting, though, that whoever is behind this attack appears like they want to, they want it to make it look like these comments are show-driven, right? It's engagement related to the content of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Essentially, Bravo fan engagement, which further goes to my initial reaction being like, oh, this looks like a bunch of Karens that are just, they have nothing better to do with their life than to talk about Real Housewives all day, yada, yada, yada. So being that it is show-driven and being that it is pushing engagement amongst fans within the Bravo world, and then my brain started to be like, okay, well, maybe this is like a producer or clearly it has to be somebody related to the show, right? Somebody that wants people talking about the show and wants to drive engagement for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So I think that alone kind of debunks the Nicki Minaj theory that she did all of this because she was mad that Garcelle was talking about her man on The Real because that was a theory at one point that maybe Nicki Minaj was someone that hired someone to send bot attacks after her son because she's like, if you're going to attack my family, I'll attack back and I'll attack your family and don't meet me in the streets, right? I also don't really think that this is Erica because... Everyone wants to talk about how broke Erica is, right? And everyone's like, Erica has no money. She can't afford glam. She can't afford this, yada, yada, yada. So my thing is, it's like, well, if she, if everyone thinks she's so broke, why would she spend any of her money attacking Garcelle's son? Like, what benefit would she gain from that? She has legal fees to pay for. Like, to me, that just didn't seem like a realistic theory. Yes, these are, these do seem to be in defense of Erica. But again, it's given the context of, like, if you go on Erica's comments, you'll see Garcelle fans, or even if you go on Twitter, you'll see Garcelle fans going at Erica. And I kind of feel like this is just a theme that we have in the housewives world where when there's a beef, people then immediately want to take it to social media. And instead of just tweeting about it, they want to tag these women. They want to go on their social accounts. They want to go in their comments and they want to let you know that this is how they're feeling. And they want you to know that they're, that you're wrong, right? Well, 
if you dig a little further, if I looked and it looks like Erica has the lowest percentages of fake followers on Instagram. So she comes in at a 19.47% fake follower rating. So that's the percentage of her followers that are deemed fake, right? Which to me seems relatively low, 19%, at least compared to some of the other women. So Erica ranks next to Crystal and Dorit. Crystal comes in at 19.29% fake followers. And then Dorit's the lowest on the cast. And she comes in at 18.9% followers. Why is this important? Well, because if we're talking about hiring bots, then you want to, then it would only make sense that whoever would hire these bots, it seems likely that they would also hire a bot company to boost positive engagement about themselves, right? If they want to attack one of the other women on the show, then why wouldn't they use the same strategy to bring support in for their account, right? Have, you know, people post good things in their comments, follow them, all of that sort of stuff to boost positive engagement on their accounts, which is more beneficial rather than sending negativity towards one of the other women, or in this case, one of the other women's children. So interestingly enough, though, Garcelle happens to have the highest percentage of fake followers at 46.93%, which to me, I was like, that's high. That's almost half of her followers that are being marked as fake followers. So this is all according to Modash, which analyzes Instagram accounts to help build or sorry, to help brands determine if an influencer or a celeb has real engagement or fake engagement or fake followers. Because initially when brands were engaging in deals, they're like, oh, well, how many followers do you have? Oh, you have a million followers. Well, that's great. But if you have a million followers and you bought most of those followers and you only have like 10 people that are actually engaged in your account and would be interested, then you have to gauge the ratio of like, well, which of those 10 people would be likely to convert into making a sale or to endure, you know, supporting a product or going to an event or whatever the promotion may be. So that's why like services and software like Modash is actually really important because it helps brands figure out whether or not this particular influencer or celeb is worth the investment, at least on social media, right? So I found it interesting that Garcelle came in at a 46.93%. Now, that could just mean... It- It could mean that maybe some of the followers are bought. I'm not making that accusation. I'm just saying it's possible if half of your followers are considered fake followers and you kind of have to figure out, well, look, how did you get these fake followers? Like it's natural. And I think it's kind of organic that bot agencies or, you know, just fake accounts want to spam. They want to troll. They want to do whatever. So they're naturally going to follow people of affluence. Um, I just found that number to be astronomically high, at least in comparison to Crystal, Dorit, and Erica, right, who are under 20%. So Garcelle's ranking is 11% higher than the next highest, which is Diana Jenkins. And Diana Jenkins' account comes in at 35% fake followers on her Instagram account, followed by Kathy Hilton, who has 33% fake followers on Instagram. So about a third of Kathy's followers are fake. About a third of Diana's followers are fake. Nearly half of Garcelle's followers are fake. And then we bring in the last two, which are Rinna and Kyle. And Rinna comes in at 31%, also about a third. And then Kyle comes in at 20% of fake followers, which I thought was impressive for Kyle and Erica being that they're two of the women on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills that have the biggest followings on Instagram, yet they both rank in or they rank amongst the lowest fake followers. To me, as like somebody that used to do social media back in the day, that was kind of impressive. Or as somebody that like talks to brands and tries to negotiate deals, that's just like a, a little fun aside that, you know, they have their followers are in the millions, but their percentage of fake followers is a lot lower. I would imagine, I didn't do any of the Kardashians, but I would imagine that they, I'm sure, have a very high percentage of fake followers just because they have a very large number of followers. So naturally, I think the scale is a lot higher. Whereas if you have fewer followers and a higher fake follower rate, that says a lot. So I think I even ran my account and I think I was at like 24% fake followers and I know I've never bought followers. So it does naturally kind of happen. Um, yeah, I mean, and listen, who's, who's fake ourselves didn't, or any of these other women, Diana, didn't buy a few fake followers. I think that that's natural 
especially for people in Hollywood. It's not something I've done, but I do think it's natural that people in Hollywood want to bolster their social media digital footprint. So they buy Instagram accounts. The only reason I think this is relevant is because somebody, I would just think that it would be a logical conclusion that somebody that would buy fake followers would also possibly hire, you know, a similar agency to send a bot attack. I'm not making the accusation. I want to clarify. I'm not saying that Garcelle did this to her own son. I'm not saying Garcelle is behind this attack. I'm just saying initially I looked into this to see if Erica had a high percentage of fake followers. That was my motivation going into it. It's like, oh, well, could Erica be behind this? Let me look at her fake follower engagement and, you know, fake follower ratio and see if that's a possibility to see if this theory could take us somewhere. Unfortunately, it did not take me in the direction that I thought it would in terms of Erica, but it did raise a flag with Garcelle. But this also doesn't mean anything. And I'm not entirely convinced that Garcelle would hire bots to come after her own son, especially not with some of the comments that these people were actually writing. But I think Garcelle having the highest percentage and Erica being in the bottom three with fake followers, that combined with like Erica is mounting legal bills. I doubt Erica was behind this. I don't think any of the women on Beverly Hills are behind this, but I did want to look into that or at least go down that rabbit hole a bit just to see since a lot of the comments did seem to be defending Erica. But again, it was related to what was just aired on the show that week, which was the Garcelle versus Erica beef with, you know, Erica, I don't have to make you look bad. You can do that all on your own. So that was the fight that went down on the show the week that these bots were coming at Jax in defense of Erica. Again, I just feel like this is somebody that wants to likely boost engagement for the show or at least use the show to come at Garcelle by attacking her son. Also awful. Don't like it. Don't support it. But that just seems to be the motivation. Is there something about it that is show driven? There's something about it that's Beverly Hills driven. And these are clearly bots, right? So let's dig deeper into the comments because some of these accounts have different handles, but have the exact same comment. So for example, both this account, uh, Plesamy, I believe is the P-L-E-A-S-A-M-Y, Plesamy, and the account Catherine King 72, K-A-T-H-A-R-I-N-E-K-I-N-G 72. So both of these Instagram accounts commented on Jax's page with the exact same comment. I don't think your mom is concerned for Erica's alcoholism. I think your mom just wants fame. It's literally the exact same comment. Exact same grammar errors to completely different accounts. So this, to me, confirms that at least the majority of these comments are clearly bots. They're fake Instagram accounts. And looking further into these accounts, the individual accounts, many of these accounts appear to be gone now. But And my initial thought was like maybe they were flagged for harassment and possibly disabled by Meta or by Instagram you can report an account and if it's found to be like violating community guidelines, Instagram can disable the account after multiple offenses. They do look into things. You can appeal them, whatever, whatever. But if multiple people report an account for, you know, being harassing or whatever the case may be, whatever the community guidelines may be that they're violating, Instagram can take that down. I would assume that if these accounts were taken down, they were likely taken down for harassment or for spammy behavior. It's unclear what these accounts may have also been used for because usually when you have a bot account they're usually used for different things either it's to boost engagement positive or negative or to promote a product and to slide into people's dms to promote a product whatever the case may be the bot account is designed with a specific intention in mind sometimes it's just to generate fake followers so that the account doesn't really appear to be real but at least it drives up that follower number on your Instagram account. So maybe these were actual users that took, or maybe some of them were actual users that took down their accounts after they were outed. Once Jax posted them and their Instagram accounts became public. If you get blasted for being a troll and your username's out there, I can see people deleting their account or going private or changing their username altogether to avoid any harassment of their own. I think that's cowardly because if you're going to be a troll, then you should not be afraid of getting trolled right back, right? And so the other possible theory is that whoever hired the bots, 
disabled the accounts, right? I'm not sure how that works, how to like activate multiple multiple accounts and then deactivate multiple accounts like that. Not all of the accounts that were leaving Jack's negative comments have been disabled. Some of them appear to still be up and running. So it's unlikely that whoever was running the accounts just like deleted all of them in like one click you know, control alt delete sort of feature. But I would guess maybe one of the first two options might be possible. Maybe these were some real accounts and these people changed their Instagram usernames. Um, Maybe they were disabled or I know Instagram and I think some of the other platforms like Twitter too. I know some people have noticed like, oh, one day I have this many number of followers and the next day I have this big dip in followers. So I do know that Instagram and I believe Twitter does this as well. They do like a an, an analysis to clear out some of the fake accounts. So if they find accounts that are seemingly fake under your followers and they clear them out, then those followers will disappear from your total number of followers because those accounts have been disabled. So that's something that Instagram I know has done in the past as well because they want to clean up and make sure there aren't. Like Elon Musk, when he was buying Twitter, that was one of the stipulations that he had. He was like, I want to know what percentage of the accounts on Twitter are real and what percentage are fake bots because he apparently wanted to get rid of a lot of the fake bot bot accounts. Regardless, I think it's clear that at least majority of the accounts commenting on Jax's Instagram are bots and they're not real people. If you type in their usernames, you can see that a lot of their photos appear to have been posted on the same day. That's a clear indication of a bot account. You know, if there are only seven pictures on their Instagram feed and you actually look at those accounts, you can see, oh, this was posted on May 7th. This was posted on May 7th. This was posted on May 7th. They also have no real engagement on any of their posts. They seem to be all very stock photo-y on their feed. Some of them don't even have content. So these are all kind of big red flags. Now, there is the reality of Finsta accounts, right? Where somebody will create a fake account because they want to keep up on an ex. They want to keep up with a friend. They want to, I know celebrities do that. The Kardashians said that they've done that because they want to make sure that they're following certain accounts to keep up with certain things, but they want to make sure that they're not liking or commenting on an account specifically that shows like, hey, Kim Kardashian likes your photo. And maybe it's something negative about like Black China. I don't know. Um, But at least Kim Kardashian could then keep a pulse on what's happening on social media and like content if she wanted to like content without it having to be reflective of, oh, Kim Kardashian liked this post. Because as we know, anytime Kardashians like or comment on things, it becomes a whole ordeal, right? Um, I That woke Stan account on Twitter was just accused of being Rinna's Finsta or her fake in, uh, Twitter account. So that's a Finsta. So there are instances where an account doesn't have a lot of followers, doesn't have any posts, doesn't really seem to be engaging. That doesn't automatically make them a bot because I know a lot of people do have fake Instagram accounts, which are their Finstas. That's what it's called. Fake Insta, Finsta. Learn that term from my sister, a Finsta. Um, Curious if any of you guys have Finstas. I'm sure some of you do because you're like, I don't want to, I want to make sure I'm keeping up with that bitch. Now I want that bitch. Now I'm keeping up with them. So anyway, but a clear bot account is when, you know, there's like a photo and it's kind of blurry and then you have a series of photos and they're all posted on like May 7th. And if it's a series of photos and they're all posted on the same day, then that's really just to create an account to make it look like this is a real user. When if you dig a little deeper, you can tell it's clearly not a real user. So it does appear that the comments are all related to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So it doesn't really appear that all of them are racially driven as was the narrative that there was a racist bot attack on Jax. There were a couple comments that were racially motivated that did stand out to me. These were the only three that I was able to find. The rest of them were like team Diana or, you know, team this person or don't come after this person or your mom is fame hungry. It was a bunch of those. Actually, let me read you some of the comments. Um, That way you can get a sense of what people were actually saying to Jax. Um, So this Cindy person says, tell your mom to leave Erica alone. This Hilda person says, if Oliver gets back to using drugs, will Garcelle feel guilty for calling Erica an alcoholic and making her look bad? Um, Can you uh, something about behaviors? Garcelle ignores them. 
there, sorry, there's a, a Jax's message about, I'm a 14 year old, leave me alone, is covering the rest of the message. Um, Garcelle, worry about the real being canceled and leave Erica alone. Garcelle, have you checked Oliver's drug intake yet? Worry about that rather than worrying about Erica. So there is a common theme to a lot of these, right? Garcelle is always using race for everything. So the comments that did appear to be racially driven, not were right. Well, let's get into some of those, right? Because there's one um, specifically by this account, Skull Keeley, SEO. S C A sorry, S-C-H-O-L-L-K-E-E-L-E-Y. A lot of these accounts, like I said, are now disabled. Um, and so they left a comment that reads, Garcelle, how about your microaggression towards Crystal? So race is brought into some of these, right? There's another one from Laster9033. Can you please stop critiquing and belittling Diana with her grammar? Your whole family are immigrants. And then there's, of course, the one that was the worst of all from that Queens of the Tea account. And that person wrote, you'd have your neck kneeled on if it weren't for your white daddy. Tell your mom to leave Diana alone or you'll deal with us, which is just horrendous. And that was the worst of the comments. And that's the one that Jax ultimately ended up posting when he was sharing all the mean comments that he was getting. Again, awful, 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 awful. That account does not appear to be active anymore either. Unclear whether it was a person that deactivated their own account or the account was suspended. I just know you can't find that account currently on Instagram. But that last account is the one that was linked to the IP address and the phone number that was based in Northern California. I would assume that, you know, if we have an IP address and a phone number, then you probably have a name and an address and we know exactly who that person is. And I assume that Diana's investigation will further probe that, but we'll see. Like I said, that account's gone. It's unclear whether it was a real account or part of this bot attack series. I would assume it may have been like a real person that just wanted to jump in on the fight because their account was the other. A lot of the other accounts were found overseas, but this one happens to be a U.S. happens to have a U.S. based IP address and phone number attached to it. So that's why it seems like this may be a real person that's actually here. And I wouldn't think that the person that was sending the bots after Garcelle's son would also have their own account that would comment in on this like they just wouldn't want to get their hands dirty this just seemed like a demented fan that wanted to jump in on the fight from from where I'm looking at it um so I don't know if anything major can even be done in an investigation like this Garcelle says that she has her own independent investigation being done I know she teased while she was at BravoCon that that weekend she was going to announce who you know her investigation found to be the culprit far as I'm aware, that information was never revealed. So I don't know. I also haven't heard her mention anything or address it in any way. My theory, again, is this is someone that either wanted to really hurt Garcelle or someone that wanted to boost tension amongst the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills fans and boost engagement. We know that this happens a lot during political elections. Bots come in to boost friction amongst both political parties. So it's possible that that's a motive, that there was just a, a desire to cause mayhem. Um, it's just interesting that Jax happened to be the target of it. I know that the YouTube psychic and Frodite, he did a reading on his YouTube channel on all of this stuff, and he claims that he doesn't believe that this is someone that's on the show, but someone that Garcelle pissed off somewhere else, and that individual is just using the show to get back at Garcelle, which is how all of those Nicki Minaj theories started, um, because we know Garcelle interviewed, I believe, uh, the alleged victim of Nicki Minaj's partner who um, there are accusations of him sexually abusing a woman. And I believe she appeared on the reel with Garcelle and Garcelle like discussed it and, you know, didn't have kind things to say about Nicki and her man. So I would imagine that or that's how those theories started is that, you know, it, that's they came to that conclusion because they were like, oh, well, because Nicki Minaj also, I think, posted some stuff on on social media. And I believe she also referenced Jax or referenced Garcelle's kids. So that's where people were like, oh, Nicki's probably the one that did all of this because she was mad at Garcelle and she wanted to make it look like, 
you know, it was related to the show or whatever. Based off of the comments and what like people were actually saying, there has to be somebody that's like involved in the show or at least aware of the storylines that were able to craft these. I don't even know how a bot would I mean, I guess some of the comments were the same, but for the most part, they all seem to be very differing comments. So I don't know. I'm not an internet sleuth. I'm not a tech person necessarily. It's all just speculation at this point. I think we're far from having any resolution to this, especially if most of the accounts are from IP addresses that are overseas that shows that this is pretty sophisticated and that there's likely someone that has this business that, you know, they're running. I don't know. It just sounds like there's clearly like some money behind this. This isn't like some internet troll that's like in his mom's basement, just like doing the best. Unless, I mean, listen, there can be smart, some smart people living from their mom's basements, but something about it just feels unclear. It's all, like I said, it's all speculation. I'm curious what your thoughts are Who do you think is to blame? What are your theories on all of this? Let me know. You can drop a comment below. And do you think anything will come of Diana and Garcelle's investigations? Do you think that they'll actually lead to anything? I don't think that this was anybody on the cast. And I mean, I could also see the theory that Anphrodite came up with about it being somebody else that just wanted it to look like it was about the show because that definitely seems to be the narrative that we're painting it also seems to be like whoever did this kind of wants to make it obvious that they're defending diana erica i guess diana and erica were the two that were referenced the most in defense of um which also to me seems a little too obvious that's why i don't think it would be diana or erica because don't you think like if this kid keeps getting this one as mothers. I don't think they would ever do that to a child of somebody else. I know people want to reference like Gar or reference Gar yeah Garcelle's birthday party where Erica yelled at Jax, but I mean she's apologized for that profusely, and I just I don't think that they would do that. Um, I just think, you know, I, I, I just I don't believe that they would actually do that. I don't. I don't believe that this is anybody on the actual cast. I also think that the fact that they're mentioned so many times in the comments wants us to think that maybe this is in defense of the two of them. And I think it would be stupid of either of them to hire somebody. That's like if I said, oh, I want to go to Joe Blow over there on YouTube or, you know, Sally Bitch May over there on Instagram and have them get a flood of comments that come at them, but are defending Zach. Right. And it, all these comments are like, I'm Zach pack. I love Zach. Don't be mean to Zach, blah, blah, blah. That would be stupid. Right. Of me, because then it would kind of look obvious if this were a bot attack, it would look a little too obvious that I would be possibly behind it because it's in defense of me. I just think it leaves too many fingerprints to actually be a legitimate theory. But again, I could be wrong. I could be blind. I could have rose colored glasses. I'm human. Curious what your thoughts are, or if there's anything that I've missed that you think is a really important piece of this entire puzzle. These comments are are brutal. They are awful. Again, none of them really seemed to be entirely racial motivated. A lot of them seem to come for Oliver. Um, a lot of them seem to come at Garcelle. Garcelle, we Google you and all we see are your five inch nipples from Playboy. LOL. That was from Elizabeth Thurley. Then we have Garcelle. The reel was canceled because of you. Please don't get Real Housewives of Beverly Hills canceled as well. You called Diana uneducated, but you did not even finish high school, Garcelle. Leave Erica and Lisa alone. Your mom is a D-list actress who is getting who wasn't getting or who was getting any bookings, so she had to join a reality show. Tell, tell her to pipe down. It also seems like the grammar on these are just really bad. <laughs> um I don't think your mom is concerned for Erica's alcoholism. I think your mom just wants fame. That was one of the repeat comments. Come on, Garcelle. Oliver is a drug addict. How can you call Erica an alcoholic? Your brother Oliver is a drug addict, but your mom is calling Erica an alcoholic and making her look bad. Make it make sense. So, yeah, these are all pretty brutal. Your brother is a drug addict, but your mom is calling Erica. Yeah. Um, Will Garcelle feel guilty for calling Eric an alcoholic? Garcelle, how about your microaggressions for Crystal? Yeah, we read some of those already. So, again, 
Let me know what your theories are and how you feel about the whole situation. I also do want to give a little shout out to Sultan Bashari on Twitter for the screenshots of these comments that I showed here on the YouTube and also for introducing me to Modash, which is the Instagram follower and engagement tracker. He's the one that looked into it first and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Where did you get this info? And then I was able to pull the info from there showing, you know, the analysis of each of the women's Instagram accounts. So given all of that information, given everything that's been laid out, I'm curious what your thoughts are. It doesn't feel like it doesn't appear we've gotten anything from Garcelle's investigation, at least with Diana's investigation, there appears to be like some movement. So I guess we shall see. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful week so far. Don't miss an all new Instagram and YouTube live this Thursday night. We go live on Instagram at no filter with Zach and on YouTube, youtube.com slash just plain Zach. It's my YouTube handle. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, smash the like button. Be sure to subscribe for more tea. We'll be going live this Thursday. We'll be recapping this week's episodes of Real Housewives and maybe some of the other Bravo shows. We'll see. Let me know what shows you want to recap on Thursday night live this week. We will be live 5.30 p.m. Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. We also have book club every Tuesday. We just wrapped up Meghan Markle's book, and then we will be starting Matthew Perry's book, Matthew Perry from Friends. We'll be diving into his new memoir. If you guys want to keep up with me, you can keep up with me at Just Plain Zach all over the internet. You can stock up on some Housewives Watch and Wine at NoFilterWine.com. 13% alcohol by volume, but less than a gram of sugar. Get ready, everybody. Get ready, Freddie. And don't miss an all-new episode of You're Doing Amazing, Sweetie, on the Ringer Reality TV podcast on Spotify. You're Doing Amazing, Sweetie, a Kardashian's weekly recap. I also did a fun episode with the Ringer Dish, diving into Lindsay Lohan's career as we count down to the Lohan renaissance with her new Christmas flick coming out on Netflix. So stay tuned for that, too. Ringer Dish, Ringer Reality TV podcast. Go support, subscribe. Leave me a five-star review for listening to this on Apple. And that's all I have for you guys. I love you. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you Thursday. Bye.